All right. Welcome back. Episode 115 of Freight 360. We don't have Ben today. We have Mr. Will Jones. Will, how are you? I'm doing quite fine, Nate. It's been a, a pretty busy month uh, leading up to the holidays and looking forward to getting through that and back to work, to be honest. Yeah. With you. So for the listeners out there, we had Will on uh, back in June of this year. He's a <laughs> independent agent uh, with my company, and uh, he's been everything from W-2 to a, a licensed brokerage, started a couple of brokerages, and you know, been an agent a couple times around. So wealth of knowledge, and we've got a, a lot of good questions we're going to run through today. And uh, just just glad to have you on here, Will. Uh, but first, if you're brand new here, you're me, hit that subscribe button. You get the latest content every Friday when we drop it here, uh, whether it's YouTube or iTunes, wherever you listen to us. And make sure to leave that review. Five stars helps us rank higher. And um, share us with all your friends in the industry. We've got a lot of a lot of good. Come on, people. Let's give them some 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 high some high stars. Some high stars. That's right. Five stars is always a good thing. Helps us rank good and help folks find us that uh, could use us. So a um, lot of good questions. But before we get into today's uh, episode, Will, um, did you watch any sports or NFL this past weekend? Because the first thing I want yeah. to say is my Buffalo Bills had a nice little comeback game over the Jets. They, but uh, who they you did. Watch? Well, uh, being that Nate and I, have, or Nate, you and I have been colleagues for years, I've kind of always followed and favored the Bills. But one of my favorite teams that let me down this week, and I don't know why I'm I'm infatuated, is, is uh, the the Buccaneers. I think it's great. That, that Brady and Gronk went down to Tampa Bay first year won the Super Bowl. But, you know, it's it's getting down to the nitty-gritty. Are they right like the playoffs. Are they six and three now? Yeah, yeah, they started off, you know, like the, the crack, and now they're kind of falling off. The Bill, what are the Bills? Six and three. Yeah, six and three. Yeah, Buffalo's, yeah, got you guys, Buffalo's uh, hosting Indianapolis this weekend. I think there's a seven-point spread there. Um, yep. I had a nice little, I had a nice spread win, thanks to you, Mr. Jones. But uh, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> did you bet on the Bills? Yeah, that was that was my tip, and then I took some others that kind of made me be flushed. But, I wonder yeah, if that there's was a ever going to be a free 360 sports book. Now that I'm, so hey, online hey. sports gambling I actually finally got approved in New York, and they're going to have DraftKings. Um, Caesars, MGM. Uh, I think Ben Affleck Valley. has his own deal. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get it in by the Super Bowl, but hey, Buffalo is uh, favored by a lot of people to uh, to win the Super Bowl. Still, you know what's crazy? Tennessee's like number one in the AFC, and they're people are just saying they can't do it. They can't get through the postseason, and um, it's just and put up. Nate, I'm, you, know, you know I'm what, sorry to cut you off. You know I'm more well versed in college football. I bleed orange. I, Go Vols, you know, I went to the University of Tennessee. GBO. Um, and and it's, it's just like almost the same format as the Tennessee Titans. You know, we can't finish. We, we put up against Alabama the first half. We were tied, and then third quarter, we just fell off. It's a good uh, fight to put up, though. Well, and, and that's college. But what I was getting at, you know, the pros, the Tennessee Titans are the same way. They just can't finish. So I'm, I'm rooting for the Bills. And uh, I'm expecting that that Bills gear that you told me you're going to mail me about a month ago. (laughs) (laughs) Got to get you to a game up here. Um, Good stuff. I'll give my predictions on this weekend at the end of the episode. So a lot of good questions. First, I got to give a shout out to our friends and sponsor over at DAT. Take the guesswork out of freight with DAT. The DAT Load Board Network is the largest on-demand freight marketplace in North America connecting brokers with available capacity in any lane. Grow your business with tools that allow you to find new partners. Plus, you can quickly qualify and onboard new car- carrier, onboard new carriers. And with the industry's leading freight rate data, you can make clear and confident pricing decisions. Usually Ben reads this off, but he's not here, so I, I fumbled through it. Genius. But as always, check out the link in the episode notes. You'll get a free month of any DAT load board. Uh, DAC Power is what I use every day. And, Will, that's what you use every day, too. So I do. That's And it's a very convenient. Every time I turn it on, I say, how convenient. And uh, it is. It's And that's the thing. We can jump into that. Just a quick thing I have to say is the top two boards, you know, find trucks, search trucks, post loads, be truck stop, or 
DAT. Yeah. And I think DAT can kick rocks at internships. That's just an opinion. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. All right. So um, last time we had you on, we talked through basically the you know success story of yours and kind of your background in freight. Um, you've done a little bit of everything in brokerage. So um, we got some listener questions that we're going to go through. I, I obviously I, I sent them over to you, but a lot of this stuff is pretty basic or simple. You know, feel free and give your take on it. Uh, we'll get right into it. So the first question we had somebody ask is, what are some of the fines or penalties that I should include on my rate cons? Uh, and I want to start off by saying okay. that Fine, fines and penal fines and penalties. Oh, okay, so yeah. So you. like okay. you know, for example, like now it's a serial job. Yeah. So like think about detention or late pickup, late delivery, um, yeah. stuff like that, right? And, and yeah, I mean, lumper, yeah. long story short, if there's any possible fine you're going to issue, you should probably list it on your rate confirmation. So, like, what what, what are some of the things that you talk to carriers about? Um, All right. So, when, first and foremost, when when you book a when you book a truck or a carrier, and you vetted them to the A plus status that your brokerage that successful should, um, some of the fines or penalties shouldn't occur should you include every piece of information that they need to pick up your freight because when you start becoming successful and gaining more volume and customers you want to put everything that is valid to the load pickup number reference number customer name to a t um, everything they need and there won't be any or you also want to add should there be uh, a, a late timing for crane chart, you know, there's going to be a fine. You want to be fine. You want, you want to find tooth comb it. What, what's the term I'm looking for, Nate? I'm sorry. Throw it with a fine tooth comb. See, I don't comb my hair. So, <laughs> I don't um, have enough hair to well, comb. What I'm getting at is you want to put every everything that um, an asset surcharge will be, you know, the lumper should be paid and reimbursed. Uh, the tension will be paid if dry van after two hours. If not negotiated, you say no detention. You want to put everything that a carrier will and try to get out of you on that rate con that covers your assets. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. That's good. I like that uh, double entendre. No, I agree with you, man. Be, I've okay. seen too many times that a customer might. They might have certain fines, like if you don't have your POD sent in within 48 hours or 72 hours, customer might fine you 50 bucks. And if you intend to pass that through to a carrier, you've got to tell them ahead of time and have it documented. So I agree. Yeah, I agree that's that, that's a good point real quick. That answers that question, I think. But always document, always have correspondence on your rates. With your customer, always have communication and correspondence with your carriers alike. Yep, good stuff. All right, next question. Um, what are some tips for someone that is going off on their own to start their first brokerage? Now, context to this question. This is someone that they work in brokerage already, right? They've been in it for years, um, W-2 employee, been an agent, and now they're like, I want to go off and start my own brokerage and get you know get my own operating authority and all that. Will, you've done this a couple of times. Over. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I've done it think? Uh, four, four times from from. Admin to janitor is what I like to call it. So, you know, obviously you need your BOC3, you need your surety bond. You've got to get your operating authority, which is your motor carrier, USDOT number, your insurance, which cargo liability, the industry standard is 100,000, uh, 1 million. Um, and you really want to have, if you're opening up your own brokerage, you're going to be the new kid on the block, so to speak. Yeah. You're not going to be able to post loads and carriers call in. You're going to have to call out and almost sell the carrier more than you're trying to get, you know, new business from Customers, cold call. Yeah. Because these carriers are looking you up on a, and Sonia or whatever, you know. Um, I think that provides even a, a, a yeah. And truck stop for, does that does trans. Credit, Ansonia, all, all those guys. companies will too. That's why you hear when you, if you start a new brokerage, because I went through this, you might have to prepay 
uh, ACH wire for the first month. Uh, talk to DAT, negotiate, which I think we can go on, go on to next. Um, but it's something that you need to uh, really work on building your payables uh, with your accounting department to the carrier <laughs> uh, as soon as possible. That's the only way to build your credibility because you're the new kid on the block yeah. that's got you know, all the hot pockets so, and bagel bites. So let me ask you this. I mean, that, that leads into our next question, which is how long should it take for my credit to actually look good? Um, so, like, they actually asked Ed, Sony, and DAT, for example, right? How long after I'm paying on time or prepaying, whatever, how long should it take for that stuff to reflect? And I've talked about it in the past. Um, factoring companies, it's one thing. But a carrier, they may not report that stuff necessarily, right? right. You got to, like, right. you got to yeah. beg and plead them. But what, so what you do you see? You're talking a month, or what does that look like on average? Until you and what, what are on average, done? if this is just my opinion and a statistic, it would be 30 days. Now, there's been different scenarios. For instance, I opened up uh, a freight brokerage for Platinum Cargo Logistics, which they were a freight forwarder out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado. This is in 2015. Uh, opened up a successful brokerage, and they had been the new kid on the block for you know being a freight broker not a freight forward sure. so they were quite wealthy with what they did and uh they ended up paying uh duns and bradstreet db ten thousand dollars just to go ahead and leap them to the top pay to which play is, isn't that isn't that crazy play, play. which i mean if you if you've got if you got the money that's fine but honestly just you know keep your accounting your invoicing uh to your customers that so they pay you don't don't you know, overpay your carriers. You want to have your receivables and your payables, you know, um, you know, evenly measured. But but definitely stand top of that. Thirty days, I would say, would be the answer. That's interesting. I, I've had people that have told me they've been in the business a year, if not a little bit over a year, and they're still having factoring companies turn them down. So, it, but I think it, it all it, comes it might down depend on to what they were doing in those in that first year, though. Now, let me, yeah, let me back check. So. This, this last venture I did in Miami, Florida, JFS Logistics, Jacob Fleischman Sons, they, I got down there with some kind of broken promises. They handed me a credit card and said, open up a brokerage. I said, well, okay. Uh, so I did that. Um, it took me one month, two months, to get our whole accounting system, which they like to do from 1982, but I – kind of sped it up and uh, you know we're, we're in the new age where there's there's technology and we don't have to file every piece of paper um but that's not going to the end. um <laughs> good but being, being, that being said if you there's technology and software cookbooks what have you that you know if you don't want to go through a factoring company because i've heard of brokerages using factoring companies but that's just defeats the purpose of having a 100 percent self-run sustaining broker yeah so yeah it took me 30 days to get us you know up to 90 and above uh, 90 and above on your credit rating you're saying mm -hmm. okay yes so Pay so you're prepaying carriers that whole time though yes. well when you say prepay though are you paying upon delivery or how are you actually doing it it would depend I'm quite the salesman, not to toot my own horn. So these carriers, you know, I would say, listen, uh, I'm not a new kid on the block, but this brokerage is. Um, uh, we move 40, 50 loads out of here a day out of Miami. And outbound Miami, if you know the brokerage industry or the freight industry transportation, it's hard to get out of for any uh, equipment, flatbed, dry van, reef, or what have you. So I would say, listen, I'm going to prepay you a half. 50% when you pick up, and you'll have a wire when you show me POD, yep. proof of delivery. That's, upon delivery. that's exactly so it what I was... up the scenario, but, yeah. but, it, but it ended up working out. Yeah, yeah that's, and it, that's exactly what we've, we've talked about on this show before is um, it's almost like you wouldn't give a fuel advance out to a carrier if they hadn't picked up the load yet. You know what I mean? Like you, you want to make sure, verify that that load's been picked up. And then upon delivery, absolutely, right? 
Um, and that stuff will help yes. you if you consistently do that. Now, the problem people run into is they're like, well, I don't have – I don't have the money or the funds or the capital to prepay carriers. And I, like, I'm sorry, but that is, that is, you know, it's a hurdle. In my, in my opinion, Nate, right, to, just to kind of agree with you, not to put down anybody that needs a fuel advance, but you really don't want to use a carrier who's asking right out of the gate for a fuel advance. Right. I got, I got, uh, you know, bamboozled, let's say, twice from a, a racketeering company over in the Middle East that, you know, uh, got us for like $17,000. They would present themselves as a broker. Uh, and they would dispatch, but then they would ask for the fuel advance and you w- wouldn't hear from them. So just be careful, with that, especially with com, com data checks. Those are, those are very uh, hacker-friendly, I guess you should say. Uh, but back to your point, I kind of, went off the- <laughs> no that's okay and that's some of the risk you take when if you're trying to pay carriers quick like or you know advance them money upon pickup to get yeah uh, yeah betting a, oh, betting a carrier is it just because you have Sorry, a new but- mc doesn't mean you're you are partially the new kid on the block right so the you know person that asked this question asked you know they've been do they've been doing this job for quite a while and what are some tips is you can reference, you know, your your style of business and your success from the past, and you can get a lot of references from people you've done business with before you went out and got your own authority, right? And there's a subjective nature to it, and people will they'll actually take into account the character, your personal character, your, your personality over the phone. Yeah. You know, I, I I used to have just a, pretty much as a song I sang, but I would just say to me like, "This is Wilbur." That's my nickname, Wilbur, like Mr. Ed. Anyway, uh, Wilbur Jones, JFS. Yes, we were in, we were a new uh, brokerage, new kid on the block. And I went on and on and on. We can prepay you, but I promise you, you're going to be paid within, by the time you deliver next day. And that's how we had to do it. Um, and they, you know, that's your word, your bond to the carrier. Once, you, once you've done a couple loads, a few loads, your name gets out on the street per se, like I said, new new kid on the block, and and you they know you have the freight. They're going to start calling you, and you won't have to worry. Right. So that's why I say 30, 30, 30 to sixty days would be, a, would be a good average. I dig it. I dig it. Good stuff. Too, yeah. All right, let's get on to the next question here. This is about tracking. So, uh, what tools can Ooh. I use for GPS tracking? Um, obviously, macro. Why don't you handle that one, Nate? What's that? I said I'll let you handle that. Yeah. One. Well, I mean. MacroPoint is probably the most commonly used tracking software that's out there, right? TruckStop also has a, a tool for it. Trucker Tools has a tool. Um, ELDs, just about all the major ELD providers now for carriers have some kind of tracking tool that you can enable depending on which TMS you're using. But uh, How convenient. Say again? I said, how convenient? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know. First of all, they, they got to want to integrate it, and it has to be able to be integrated. But um, no, when they rolled out a lot of the, the ELDs out there, uh, tracking is obviously part of it because the, they, these fleets want to know where their assets are located around the country. So they're, they're able to pull that data. Problem is, a lot of drivers don't want to give you their location. They right. don't want to be acting well, like they're – they don't want to be treated like they're being babysat by, you know, freight broker. Then, then then I, had a, I, had, job. I had a reefer load uh, that picked up Jacksonville to Tracy, California, some frozen lobster tails. And and this guy was adamant about me sending him macro point because he didn't, you know, he, he was a very, very uh, just professional driver. And he didn't want to have to, you know, update me. He wanted me to be able to, you know, follow him and yeah. his hours and that sort of thing. So, yeah, like you said, a lot of these guys, it, it all goes with the vetting part. And uh, I think macro points the one I'm most familiar with. Um, the, the, uh, and that's why I said how convenient on the on the ELT. Um, that would, I don't know. What, what, are, there, are there different law, are there different kind of laws or bylaws that, that would break the ELD with the US DOT on, on tracking? Uh, to, not to my knowledge. I'll, I'll tell you with the capability side. So there's a lot of there's a lot of new 
TMS platforms that have popped up. Obviously, you know, you and I have personally gone through demos on a handful of them for our company, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the big thing is a lot of these new TMS companies or software companies out there, their goal is to be able to integrate with as many tools out there as possible. And one of the big points of focus was on uh, in-transit visibility for drivers, right? And they have the ability now to API integrate with a lot of various ELD platforms to be able to pull live tracking in similar to what macro plan would do but you don't have to pay the cost because macro plan obviously you pay per load that you're tracking whereas if you already have an eld and your tms already supports it they can integrate the reality is not a lot of people are Isn't actually it? using that tool because not they really not are. every single broker is going to have tracking on their loads and not every carrier wants to be tracked on their loads but it's capable that, so that, you know what's a lot more efficient in my eyes is you get the number, trailer number, and whatever name. Good communication with them throughout the transit. What do you think, Mr. Will? Uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. My first yeah. when I when I book a truck, what's your MC? What's your or what's your name? How you doing today? That's what it would have. MC number, uh, truck trailer number, driver name, driver number, ETA, and then it goes back to one of the first questions: uh, What are some of the fines or penalties? That goes along with providing every piece of information that will cause you not to get a phone call when you're in the middle of a conference call with a Caterpillar customer you just landed from a truck driver that doesn't know what he's doing. He just showed up. I got and His name is Mike, but it, I, I don't know my pickup number. Um, you know, it's just, it's something that it's being complacent, be, being, <laughs> giving as much information to your carrier will save you a whirlwind of, a, of headaches. And that's, I've been adamant about that. I'm craving to great. So. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? You're moving a lot of right. volume. I dig it. You can prevent the need for tracking and the, prevent the need or prevent the, a lot of issues that pop up if you just tell them. But if they disappear, like, or if they break down, that's why I always get the driver's number, and and I and I always use the phrase, "Listen, I'm not going to be bugging your driver. I'll be I'll be you know getting updates from you, dispatcher, Tammy. Uh, but just for safety reasons, we I can't send you a Raycon because I have to fill in this field with your driver's number. That's how I put it. A little white line number. You know what though? Some TMS platforms they will have the driver's cell phone number as a mandatory field. Obviously, you could just fudge it, but that's you I mean maybe that little white lie though, but it's you know it's well. It's, I mean, it's really not. It's it's actually something that's very. I think it should be a part of a USDOT regulation that the driver or the ELD. Now that we have ELD, you I mean, or they have ELD, and we, we're the broker. But it's something you need to you need to know where the truck's going to be so you can update your customer. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and you and I both know Nate that some of the carriers we can vet them all they want on on paper and through FMCSA and. Uh, TIA, Watchdog, whatever, but it all comes down to their performance. And uh, having the driver's numbers, the you know, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot the breeze with the guy. Man. I just want to know where he is. <laughs> I agree. No offense to those drivers out there. No, I, I hear you. Um, I do want to. I want to give a shout out to our other sponsor, Lean Solutions Group. Before we get to the other few questions here, so uh, you can go to leangroup.com. Uh, we're going to have Trey Griggs on here in the next, uh, hopefully the next month to talk about something cool. But Lean's been a sponsor of ours for a while. Freight 360 personally uses them for marketing and on the tech side. But they're they're heavily known for their near shore uh, staffing solution where they've got an office, or actually three of them down in Columbia, uh, South America. And they've got trained freight broker ops people and account managers that you can hire at a fraction of the price that are trained in this industry to help grow your business. So you're going to get uh, folks that speak good English and you can get basically two of them for the cost of one in the state. So check them out at leangroup.com. All right. The next question I have, Will. Now I'm going to, I'm going to answer this, but you, you asked the question. What tools can a new broker use to find shippers to call on? And let me preface this. We get this question so often and it's asked different ways. At the end of the day, they want to know, where do I find customers? Okay. I mean, I'm gonna, I'll give you some answers, but I want I want to know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer. You've been on a block, uh, you know, a time or two. 
What did you do? I to mean, find they, my nickname's the Town Bicycle. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I uh, um, no, I want I want to kind of go off the beaten path for a second, come right back into it. Um, Nate and I have been colleagues, like we talked about, for years and years and years since I think ten years probably, and. I tra- I've trained all my guys over the years, well, since Nate and Ben put out this Freight Brokerage 101, which is a mere $749. Freight Broker teaches, Basics. The basics teaches you, that's just the basics. If you want to get into the nitty gritty, go, Nate will tell you about it. I'm telling you, I have successfully trained brokerages with this video just by Paying the seven hundred forty nine dollars. I never made. I'll never make you pay. Will. Well, not me personally, but I know a guy that did. <laughs> no, a, a lot. <laughs> that's a quote of movie. I'm not kidding. Nate and Ben put this video together. I've given it to all my guys. I've given it to. I mean, I've, Nate knows. It's just it goes from A to Z. But getting customers is the question. It's all about fourth attributes in my opinion. Four actions. Four attributes. Oh, attributes. Ethical freight rates, which I believe I'm going to go A, B, and C. Um, volume and small margin over one big winner. Ooh, I got a thousand dollar winner. Well, you're never going to see that customer again. Um, ethical freight rates, communication, um, being punctual and just being downright starting a relationship, you know, don't bug them. Don't, don't be a, a, a robot that's reading a manuscript. Is that, did I say it right? I think last time I said manifest. You did say manifest. Uh, well, we were in Nashville for a few days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, is it's just, you know, stay on your leads, keep up with your telemarketing, you know, um, these different brokerages have different training methods, but like I said, Nate and Ben's video is, is something that's uh, it's spot on. So I want to I want to interject here because um, you just answered a different question, but it's a good question. We're we're looking at how do you find leads, and you answered better yet. How do you actually get business? And that's even more important. And one of the things you mentioned is um, is building a rapport and a relationship. And I think we could give you all all the tips and tricks all you want if you don't if you don't have a a, like if you're not a likable person, if you don't have a, an easy to get along with like sort of sense about you, people aren't going to want to do business with you. I mean, it comes down to that, and you have to you have to on your own individually learn how to be your more outgoing, more likable. Right? You don't want to sound sleazy like a used car salesman in that generic um, type of way, but you also don't want to sound like a robot reading off of a script, like you said, or manifest, as you called it, right? Yeah. So what, so what was the question? It was you know, uh, I, I, tools to find fine. shippers. So okay. like Google, when LinkedIn, I ThomasNet, Reference USA. Uh, there's uh, Google. Chamber of Commerce websites, Zoom Info. There's a ton of them. I just named like seven hey. of them. So Google's, the, hey. Google's uh, the easiest one. I'll tell you, in 2007, when I, when I started uh, with Access America Transport, I'd already been interning. At a, at, a, at a shipping and receiving place for three years um, when I was getting through college. But at Access, nobody was doing, and Coyote bought out Access America Transport in 2012, I think. Anyway, um, I was calling, I got in the oil and gas industry. I was simply calling shipping and receivers, shippers and receivers, asking them, how do you load a truck? What are the requirements for flatbed to load pipe, oil fill pipe, you know? Just, just ask questions before you call your customer. Have industry knowledge. I would say would be the biggest and the, in That's the most huge. sharpest tool. Yeah, because they're going to know if you don't industry know knowledge. jack shit about freight. Yeah, if you look up, <laughs> uh, like you said, Thomas Net. If you just find a number and you call, hi, this is Will with. Who do I work for? Wait, hold on. Do you have the trucks or do we have the trucks? I, I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> I mean, that's what it will come down to. And so do your research. Do do your due diligence. Do your job. Don't sit on Facebook. If you want to be successful, I mean, I yeah, it's fun. I, it's fun. I'll tell you this, too, is, you know, one of the things I did when I first got in this industry was uh, 
to listen to the people around me, right? Listen to what they're saying on the phone. Hop on their phone calls. Listen in, like plug a second headset in and just kind of hear how it goes, right? You can learn from others. But you definitely have to have the knowledge. You got to know basic industry stuff. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. And then you pick up over the years, you start picking up different, you know, terminologies and different lingo. And it becomes, a, for me, a, I love my job. Yeah. All right. The next question we've got here is what kind of pay or commission should a carrier sales rep make? So um, I don't think that you, I don't think that you use this model. So I'll answer this one. So what some people will do in their brokerage is they will hire accounting, I'm sorry, not accounting, account managers, right? To just handle building a book of business, getting loads, quoting, and then they'll hire an operations person to cover their freight, okay? And or so customer sales and carrier sales person just to try to source carriers and stuff like that. And there's no right or wrong way to pay somebody, but I I always love to incentivize folks with commission. All right. So if you can tie commission to their performance, it gives them an incentive to, to do better, right? To get better rates from carriers, to find and source more carriers, to cover more loads. Um, so a base pay with a commission structure is, is typically pretty common. I'll tell you that um, carrier sales reps, and this is just on average, probably make between 30 and 40 grand a year, and they probably make five to 10% on commission, probably closer to five, because they're not really selling on the customer side, they're more so covering freight and they've got a base pay to go along with it. Um, that's not to say that some companies don't pay more or not have commission at all. That's just kind of where the average tends to fall. Um, because if you're not feeding them enough business to cover, they still have a base pay to fall back on. But if you have an influx in business, that commission incentivizes them to get as much of it covered as possible. So it's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends. Like some people will pay them like a, a flat 20 bucks a load you cover or a percentage, 5%, 10% that you cover. Um, I've seen people pay like 20% or 30% and they don't get a base pay. I mean, it just, it really just depends. It would depend. I, I'm trying to fathom it. It would depend on the account because I, I was I was taught and, and raised. I'm raised. Um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was taught to. Um, you know, cradle to grave. Cradle to grave being you deal with one account rep who updates you from the time of pickup to the time of delivery. So um, I've heard of these brokerages with the customer sales and the carrier sales, and that's interesting because that, that's that got to be a complacent, you know, uh, buddy system almost where the customer reps have to be in communication with carrier reps. Yeah. Well, so the reason that people will use that model with carrier sales is if you hire somebody – and you want them to learn the industry before they go out there and try to get new customers, they'll throw you in an operations role, like a carrier sales role, where, yeah, you've already got business, you've already got freight moving. We'll train them on how to get loads covered and how to check call and how to work through that operations process. Then once they've learned, they've learned it and they're comfortable with it, then they can turn around and start calling new customers and they know what the hell they're talking about then. So that's one of the reasons that right. people will use that. That makes sense because yeah. a lot of people are scared to pick up the phone. It's just a box. And yep. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to jump off the question for a second. But yeah. Well, we got one more. We got one last question. <laughs> uh, Reefer LTL. How does it work? <laughs> here's my, here's uh, my honest answer it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Because I, 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 like, I thought I had. I found a new prospect and they want me to move Reefer LTL. It's like, dude, if you don't even know LTL in the first place, let alone Reefer, don't just be hopping into Reefer LTL. And here's why. Claims, claims, claims. All right? There are some regional LTL carriers that are Reefer LTL in their region, and they have um, segmented portions of their trailer that can actually um, keep the temperature different. Right? Standard LTL carrier, not going to do that for you. So something's got to be 32 and something's got to be 40. Something's got to be you know, frozen. It's like, dude, you're asking yeah. for trouble. Yeah. It's funny. I saw that question. I saw that question. And, and when I worked in Miami, I almost thought I created a reefer LTL uh, carrier network, but it was because we shipped out so many, uh, you know, pallets a day, truckloads a day, 
um, that were all frozen, you know, so you could, I could actually match them up and they could drop them. But it really doesn't exist. You can partial, but you gotta, you gotta remember claims, just like Nate said. And, and, and that's, that's a testy business. Cause if you're, if you're LTLing or partialing a reefer frozen truck, the doors open for 30 minutes, you're compromising the freight from the other customer. Yep. So it's just not something that really. Did. So here's what I have seen when I worked in LTL with uh, Conway Freight at the time before they became XPO. It's LTL. And if someone had a refrigerated or a frozen or temperature controlled shipment, they do sell pallet size enclosed containers they can individually control the temperature of that individual pallet or that individual um, shipment. And the customer, will they own it. They own that enclosed device. And it's basically just, a, it's got tines, and it's got holes in the bottom for the forklift tines. Um, but that being said, they are controlling the temperature themselves of their shipment, not relying on the carrier to have it set. So interesting stuff. It is interesting. Yeah. And, you ever seen one of those or no? I have, yeah. I have, I've seen it, and I and I was it's like a big cooler, basically. It's, so. it's a big cooler, and it's something that I yeah, I would stay away from. That is there another question? No, that's it, man. Um, unless you got anything you want to talk about, I just want to, I just want to wrap it with my predictions on the NFL before we close it up. Today. All right. Well, I just want to say, success to be in any industry, but especially a freight broker, is pick up the phone, pick it up. Talking to a carrier is the same as talking to a customer. People. You can read them or you can't. Don't be a robot. Don't follow a manuscript. Follow your training. I would suggest, if you're starting a brokerage, back up a few questions. And I'm not trying to sell for Native Ben. That brokerage 101. Uh, free Broker Basics. Yeah, Free Broker Basics. It's the best purchase that I've ever had multiple times because I didn't have to train them. The trains your broker. And, uh, again, attributes, communication, ethical, on time, and just being a – follow the golden rule. Treat others like you want to be treated. Oh, well, yeah. It, that goes a long way. It does. It does. You got to have integrity, and you got to have a cell phone. If you lose either one, you're done. You're up the creek without a paddle. That's it. All right. Like uh, NFL predictions. Bills hosting the Colts. Minus seven spread. I'm, I I like Buffalo covering seven there. They're hot right now. Yeah, but Nate, I've seen I've seen the Colts, and, and I know you're a Bills fan. Buffalo so, beat the Colts you know. last year in the wild card. No, this year I've, I've seen I've seen what uh, the Colts have been bringing in the game, and they're five and five right now. Bills, I would take that bet, but I would buy it to to minus six and a half to cover that. In case they win I think by seven, gonna, I hear you. They're gonna win by it. 14. Um, that's that's it. The, Are you going to the game? Lions got their first uh, non loss tie with Pittsburgh? Yeah. So Roethlisberger no, was out. Was he on the COVID list or something, right? So Mason Rudolph played. That was ridiculous, you know, and I just don't get this flag football. I mean, NFL football that's coming out nowadays, you know, it goes into overtime. You can't tie. It's like, it's <laughs> like this an ESPN right now. right now. I hear it. No, that was one. <laughs> so, no, I was looking at the lines. So we got uh, New England and Atlanta. Um, the spread is plus seven. I give that one a. Let's see. We give you my expert pick, Nate, on this one. I'm which give you which game are you looking at? Locks. This is New England at Atlanta. That's tomorrow night. That's Thursday night football. Yeah. I hope the Patriots Take lose, the, but I don't know that they will. I know. I'm just, I'm just getting. England's favored by or seven points. You take take New England, but you got to buy that down to minus six and a half. Uh, you know the Falcons. They were they were turning the corner offensively, but they, they kind of took a step back when they lost the Cowboys. You know. Um, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a high scoring game. Under over is at forty seven and a half. Thursday night football, I would take the over. That's my two picks. Well, this that. podcast releases Friday, so too late to put your bets in on it. <laughs> but, eh, I'm, right, curious, I'm curious to see if you were right, though. 
You're taking the over in a six and a half point New England. That's a part of I like it. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, buddy. So Sunday, November 21st. Chiefs, Cowboys, that'll be a good one. Um, Steelers, Chargers. Houston. Yeah, Houston's uh, playing yeah. Tennessee, Green, and they're playing in Green Tennessee. Bay. So I, I mean, I'd yeah, love I to see an upset there for the AFC for Buffalo's sake, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, I I think there's a good. There's going to be a great one p.m. game, Green Bay at Minnesota. I think Green Bay's favored by two. Green Bay's favored by two, but you take the Vikings all day plus two, and the under. Hmm. Interesting. Um, can, <laughs> well, cool. We got some now, predictions. I'm, we're going to wrap up this episode here. You got any final thoughts before we sign off here, Will? Well, my final thoughts are thank you for having me on the show. Well, today. Glad to have you, man. I, I appreciate it. We'll have you on again. You know, I'm, uh, I'm like Merle Haggard. I'm a, I'm a rambling man and uh, been rambling around. But I uh, finally landed here in the great St. Elmo part of Chattanooga. And, uh, that a boy. Jones Nationwide, powered by Pierce Worldwide, is uh, up for hire. Up for hire. If you're interested, give us a call. But uh, definitely look into these podcasts and keep following them. Nick Cross has done wonders for many, many, many colleagues of mine, and uh, he and Ben alike. And so, rock on. Thanks, Will. And until next time, go Bills.